Today, we will start our tutorial for the 3D Inputs mechanics in Unity Game Engine in previous video. I made the 2D Inputs tutorial ET, but just focused on old input system, forgetting the new input system. But today, I will focus on both systems so you can kickstart your game creation. So, this is what will we do in this video. We will move our character in top-down style M. Then we add point-click mechanic with the major known devices like touchscreen, desktop keyboard, and joystick. So we start with the top-down movement. We will always start by the old input style code. Then, the new input system. Let's press play to show you already the movement E. Character move well in all direction following the handle joystick I before jumping to code. Let's show you character components if you want to replicate the scene. An animator that control all animation. We only have two animation idle and run like you see in animator tab. Second, the script that move the player and we affect all empty slot we matched entity. Finally, the rigibody and capsule collider component. We jump to script. We start by declaring variables that are the joystick and animation controller script instance. With the rigid body component and float values with a vector 3 variables, in start method we get the rigid body component. And in update loop we run the move function. Like you see, we isolate the movement code from update loop just for easy of understanding in code maintenance inside the move function. We initialize the vector 3. Variable with a zero value i. Then affect the x and z of it with the joystick vertical and horizontal data. With the multiplication with speed and delta time. And in if we have two scenario, the first one the joystick is used, that mean its value is different. Then zero a. Then we declare a local direction variable for the purpose of having the player direction data after we set transform.rotation to rotate the player in wanted direction without forgetting to call the play run method from the other script E. Then second scenario is when the player doesn't use the joystick that mean player is idle and outside the statement. We have move position method of rigid body that add the move vector variable with the current player position. And one benefit of move position is the smooth movement between frames when interpolate is on in rigid body component. Now the joystick section is finished, we go to keyboard input. Always the old input style A. This time we start with code, then show the results. We make another function and replace it with the previous move function in update loop. This time, the same logic is applicable just instead of taking data from joystick handle. We take from the two axis from the keyboard key and store them in two variables. Then replace the joystick variable s with these two variables. And in if statement, we have only one. If magnitude is bigger than zero, we know some key is pressed. Then move the player and we execute the animation. Else we stay idle. In this small example, we see a weakness of the old input system and why using the new input system came in place. By pressing play, we see that player move well in all direction and it turn in the specific direction of movement. All that with just the laptop keyboard and by using different input device, the maintainability will become hard for developers and creation will take longer. But no, we will download the new input packages, make some tweaks in settings, and start explaining it for you. We go to Package Manager, search for Input System, then download it already for my case, then go to Settings and check for Registry Packages. It will help us after when we want to generate c -sharp script, then Project Settings in Player tab. We chose both in Active Input Handling it will give us the freedom of how we want to move our characters. After, you will see a new tab added about the input system package. Right now, we see is not interactable with the default's values of all input-related variables. But when we create our input action maps, it will be interactable. So let's start. Be going below in Project tab. With a right-click, we go and select Input Actions, then we give it a name. 
After clicking it, the window appear it look frightening, but steps with steps. I will make you understand it. First thing to do, check Auto Save Box. So the first thing to understand is the action maps act like a container of all game actor like player obstacle and even enemy e each actor has a set of actions like run shoot and different action e and we will bind them with the actual physical input that could be keyboard key of gamepad stick any device that work as game controller e and the point common is the value that we take from all devices now you see we have four action maps. I purposely made them to show you that everyone has a context. One the player interact with UI, the three other with character in different contexts that need same input but different result. In this tutorial, we focus only on player on foot action maps. First action is jump. I wrote it in French just for fun before we affect specific binding. We set up the action type. Like you see, we have three style action type value. Button and pass through. We chose value because it could be in various control type and we use now the vector 2i. In binding, we chose 2d composite for moving in for direction. And we give each direction a key from our device that is the keyboard. We press listen and click on key then chose it after the four are assigned there. Respective keys. Some will not see the listen button when we assign the key because there is a bug just in this place where you see I click, take the mouse a little bit higher, and click. It will work. After we finish, I think a misspell the name of action in reality is move. Jump action. I will configure it later. Right now, you see, I added jump action. And with button as action type, because we only need two value zero or one AI, that mean pressed or not, for people wondering about interactions and processors. There are an advanced in-depth subject. We will talk about them later on in future videos. The binding with this jump action is space key on keyboard. And the power of new input system is linking multiple binding with the same action. So example, we can add another binding by clicking plus sign chose binding. In path, we chose gamepad from drop down. We don't have real device. We can't use listen button. So we chose directly from the list. I think I will chose the up D-pad button. And with this simple trick, I have this device support on my game. With just few click jump function with gamepad is set up. You just need to understand very well this package and you will become fast in term of inputs coding. When clicking on input assets you will see in inspector all your script data check the generate C sharp script box then press edit assets. You will see a script generated. Don't focus too much on it. Just translate what you did in input action window into script E. You will find it next to input actions assets in player component. We turn off all old script E. We added a script that come with packages. Its name is player input and another script self-made that we will code with new input system style. In player input script component in player, you need to drag the input actions assets we made before ours with default maps as player on foot, the UI input module, and camera. We leave them empty. In behavior, we have four mode. I chose Unity events. The first two are just normal way of creating a function that send instructions to attached game object. So for my case, I use Unity events that utilize the subscribe and unsubscribe pattern with all input function. With this method, we avoid error when the code became huge. In event, we drag player that have the script with specific input functions, and they must have a specific callback context in function parameters. So now we go to script that I made for input with new system EI. We start by importing the namespace unityengine.inputsystems. 
Then in variables, we have one for rigid body two vector variable with one bool. And the one below rigid body is the reference to the script generated by input actions. That his name is model actions. Inputs inside script. I named it inputs. In awake. We get rigid body component and start initializing the inputs action script for accessing all his variables and methods inside it. From the this script day, you will find on enable function. Like you see, we have three state of actions started performed and canceled. We want in each specific state to execute our specific functions, move and jump. So in every case, when player touch an input device, we subscribe the jump event and for move only in performed state, that mean when the action of clicking or touching already happen. And in canceled, we execute stop move just to reset every variable to zero I. And on disable, we unsubscribe from the event functions. And don't forget the dot disable like dot enable in. On enable function, their purpose is to turn on or off the input actions inside the update loop. If bool is true, we move player with second function for rotating to correct movement direction. In move player, we affect a vector three variable movement. The vector two variable move input component in X and Z axis with multiplication with speed. And after we use add force one of rigid body methods with force mode to force because it's a continuous speed increment, not just a bump of speed, with checking if velocity to higher than max speed, we normalize to keep it to maximum T. And in move, we have the callback context that read value in vector two of input and store it in vector two. Move input with setting the bool to true for all other logic of movement. For direction look function D, we have a local vector three direction that hold the velocity with fixing it to zero in Y axis. Then if there is input, be checking if the square magnitude is higher than 0.1 I, then affect the rotation. The direction variable with look rotation method, else if no input, that mean rigid body, stay in current angle with no rotation. Now for jump function, we have the callback context, then in if context is performed with is grounded to true inside the if statement. We apply force in y axis to make the jump, but this time with force mode impulse for the is grounded bool. We use a ray that go down, and if there is an ray cast hit, we return true, else we return false. And for stop move function, we make bool to false and the vector two to zero. Now we explained all functions, we press play and the player move with keyboard in all direction, we can even use a gamepad to move the character or any input device. Just, we need to mention it in the input actions with his own binding. Now we finally reach the point and click movement. We will start with the old input, then new input system. So we use the player movement script like previous fear, showing the old input logic. We change nothing in player component and we go to script and we create third function with name move with mouse click. Inside it, we have if statement detecting the mouse button click. If it happen, a ray will go from camera until it hit any object using the screen point to ray method. Then in case of collision, we take hit position point and we set the bool to true. And below another if statement. This time, if the bool is true, we calcule the direction. Then another vector three for rotation and movement direction. And even we use quaternion look rotation method. And in the movement, we use move towards method that move the character to desired place with mouse click. And we reach the desired destination. We reset bool to false and animation of idle will be played. We don't forget to call function inside update loop. Now we press play and it work with mouse click and character follow it with rotation and movement direction. So now we finish the old system implementation. We go now to implement new input system E. We turn off the player movement script and turn on the player input and second script we made before VAR. Then we go to input actions. We add new action with the name mouse click. For people wondering why not add another binding to existing move action. The reason is the action type is button instead of value like move action. So we need to create new action with button type action and with binding to left mouse button. In the script, we have some variables like vector three case, a coroutine and a camera for the main one, even the animation controller that have extern function. 
In start method, we give the camera the camera.main just for easy of writing code and not writing it every time, and hold current character position, and we subscribe to the new function. We will explain to the event in enable function of mouse click on perform state, and below it we unsubscribe on disable I. We scroll down to function, there is, it we use the same old principle, just the new modification will be how we take the mouse position data. Then inside the ray cast hit, we check if the ray hit any collider. We start a coroutine that have a vector 3 as in parameters. But before this coroutine must be null to execute it. If is exist already, we need to stop it. And this coroutine, it use a while loop that return each frame a null values and check distance between player and the desired point. Click position if is higher than 0.1, that means still not arrived to position of click I and it calculate the direction. Then use move towards for movement and outside this loop. We make the player idle because is already in the position we want. Now we go to editor to see the results. The player move like we anticipated with click and it follow. But you must be aware of something if the ray hit another object instead of the ground weird behavior will happen. Skywalking like you see with the blue wall and the solution is filter which layer to collide with and give the ground this specific layer. Now for the touchscreen inputs in both system, I think I will separate it in the next video because I don't want a tutorial that is bigger than quarter of hour. So hope you learned something today and looking to meet you in next video. Thanks.